Okay, Aaron Santos, how many licks did it take? Okay, um, my name is Aaron Santos, and I, I recently wrote a book called How Many Licks uh, that features a bunch of different estimations because I was interested in uh, trying to teach people who had had bad experiences with, with math um, just to enjoy it more and to, to find more pleasurable experiences with it. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons why you might want to estimate things. Um, the first being just academic. It's a good way to develop uh, critical thinking and, and reasoning skills. Um, another reason is that it provides a good idea filter. If you're an engineer, you don't want your first attempt at figuring out whether or not a bridge works to be the actual bridge. You want to have an idea of whether or not it works ahead of time. Um, and the last thing is, it's a fun game to play. If you're, if you're stuck in traffic, you can amuse yourself with these, with these sort of questions. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how you approximate things. And I'll give one method that was due to uh, Enrico Fermi. Um, and he had this uh, question he liked to ask students, which was namely, how many piano tuners are in Chicago? So the first thing you want to do is start off with the things that you know. So you probably don't know how many piano tuners are in Chicago, but you know, well, 5% of my friends own pianos. Uh, there's about 3 million people in, in Chicago and, and so forth and so on. And you can use that to calculate other interesting things. The next thing you want to do is cancel units. So just like in high school chemistry class, people cancels, cancels with people. So I can eliminate that and figure out the number of pianos that are in Chicago. The final step is you're going to do step two a bunch of different times. So you build up a string of cancellations. And finally, you come up with about 200 piano tuners in Chicago. And if you look up in the yellow pages, this is actually pretty close. And, and it's, uh, I think the actual number, if I remember correctly, was around 140 people. So I want to get into some fun examples. Uh, but first, I want to give uh, a little bit of a disclaimer, because people have yelled at me when I've given talks similar to this before. Um, the numbers I'm giving are just approximate. Um, please don't send me hate mail. Um, I've, I, uh, I have an interesting story that I don't have time to tell now but uh, about an audience member who, who was a little vociferous. Um, and if you're curious, come find me afterwards, and I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> But the, our first approximation has to do with this guy, which many of you know as the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from the movie Ghostbusters. But there was one thing that the movie Ghostbusters did not answer, and it's something we're going to consider here. It's a very important question. Wait for it. How, <laughs> how long did it take to eat it? <laughs> so just like the piano tuner problem, we're going to start the same way. We're going to start with what we know. So I know that a marshmallow is about this big, and I know that it has about 25 calories uh, per marshmallow. And I know that the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is about a 10-story building, um, so I can figure out his volume. So I know the number of calories and the volume of the marshmallow, so I can calculate from that the number of calories in the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man just by canceling units. Um, and I get about 64 billion calories, or about 80,000 years to eat them. <laughs> now, the next thing I'm going to consider is something we're all interested in. Um, and also is a subject of a later talk here, but how many, how many people are having sex at, at this very moment? Here? Now, <laughs> since, since it's a geeky crowd, I can only assume that you're thinking one thing. Um, <laughs> This is, this is apparently a real, uh, a real road sign. Uh, but the first thing we want to consider is the different things we know. And there are a lot of different people. And each of them is going to be having a different amount of sex. But we want to figure, what's, on average, how often does a person have sex? That's a good starting point for this calculation. So you know that once a year is probably too little. And you know, even, even your most nympho friends are probably not having sex once a day. So once per month seems like it's a good, it's a good estimate. It at least fits within the bounds of what we, expect to be, um, what we expect to be reasonable. You also want to know how often people, or how long a typical sexual encounter lasts, and hopefully more than 10 seconds. And if it lasts 10 hours, then you should probably call your doctor. Um, so, so 10 minutes seems like a reasonable amount of time. So if you take 10 minutes out of every month, that's about 0.02% or 0.02% of people. Um, about 2 million people on the planet right now are having sex, right, as we're, as we're discussing this. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this here. Um, and please, uh, please talk to me if you have questions about estimating things, and I'll be glad to, to answer them and, and talk to you about it.
Thanks, Aaron. <laughs>